Well, joining me in the studio tonight is the sports blogger and journalist Lawrence McKenna. Now, we're going to talk about the state of English football right now. Uh, England's under-21s were bottom of their pool and eliminated at the group stages of this tournament for the third time in the row. Now, the debate rumbles on, but mm -hmm. what needs to change? Um, you know what, I don't know how much needs to change about it. I think it's a progression in English football um, and there are a lot of learnings every time. But I, I think a lot of people feel like England are learning very slowly when it comes down to it. Very slowly. I mean, it, 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 it's getting repetitive, like, oh, the youngsters aren't hungry enough, they don't, they don't you know, feel any pride as they put the shirt on, there's too much pressure on them. I mean, there's got to be a point where you just think, OK, let's stop with the excuses. Well, I, I think also, uh, we, I mean, we partly say it's excuses, but we also maybe have to acknowledge that there are those kind of pressures on very young men at this time. And I think that that is an element, but there, there are huge parts of how the coaching needs to improve just at a very base level. The fact that, um, you know, that they were at St George's Park beforehand, so they did have a really good preparation and they're building towards those kind of things. Mm -hmm. The under-21 tournament is not just something that if you win it, then, you know, you go on and you become fantastic. Obviously, Germany have had that, Spain have had that, a number of people have done reasonably well, well in the tournament. They've gone I mean, on to be fantastic, so... Yeah, but that's that doesn't mean that England won't reach a high level within that and that maybe their development starts at a different stage. You know, we've seen other people and we've also seen, uh, for instance, Serbia win the under-20s World Cup but then completely bomb out of the under-21s. So what does that mean for their development? But if they've won something, at least they're progressing at some point. Well, some people's argument would be that, uh, especially as one of the originators of, you know, kind of making the game more formal and putting sports into a kind of, a, you know, a, a ruled light, if you like, Britain should probably acknowledge at some point that there's more to football than winning it. Okay. Well, uh, Gareth Southgate has come out and said that he wants to remain as the under-21s uh, England manager. Uh, do you think that the FA need to look elsewhere? Is he the right man to lead the under-21s? I, I met Gareth just before the tournament and uh, he was very positive, but obviously the normal humble self that he is. And I think that that makes it quite difficult sometimes for, for the press to cover him because he's not a particularly divisive character. He never strikes anyone as a Jose Mourinho type or kind of a Bobby Robson charismatic sort of guy. And for some people they find that quite difficult, but he's a different kind of manager to those people. And maybe someone that the national team need as part of the setup. If there's another candidate, then I'd love to see what their policy would be. But at the moment, I think Gareth is leading them in a, in a direction which at least is to develop them as footballers, develop them as a squad and bring them through as a group of players. Even if they lose, they're still going to take something away from the tournament. And I think mm -hmm. that's what Gareth brings to his England role. Well, how do they react to him? Like you said before, he's not a divisive character for the press. Mm -hmm. OK, let's take the press out of it. Yeah. What matters is how he gets on with those players. Yeah, I mean, the players are apparently behind it, but I think that's always the case generally when you have a manager in front of you who's, you know, got to pick you in the team, etc. But then there's also the idea that he's developing them defensively, certainly as a side. I mean, you know, we only saw them get through 1-0 against uh, Sweden and then after that not so well. So, you know, that, that's the point is Sweden and everyone else only really mm. managed to, I'd say, limit England for a while. And then, you know, they either hit them or they won against them. So the, the worry here is that England are not punchy enough and then people note that back to what Gareth Southgate did which is not a punchy character and they conflate the two which isn't even right. Okay well let's have a look at other former players I mean Andy Cole has said that he thinks that Rio Ferdinand could play a huge part in the future of England now yeah. how do you think that would work I mean he said that the players would could relate to him more what does he mean by that? Well I think he means that First of all, Rio is an incredible f figure within the game. A lot of people find him quite relatable. Um, he's had a lot of experience with Manchester United um, and, you know, before that as well. Certainly his development as a youngster was one which was meteoric and there are a lot of guys in that squad that are probably going to have a similar experience. Mm -hmm. Gareth is now of a different generation to that and that doesn't make him unrelatable. It doesn't mean he's a bad manager, but it means that he offers different qualities. And so to say that Rio can be part of the setup, but not necessarily managing it is probably a good way to attack that. Okay, well, let's have a look at the players as well. I mean, okay. the FA yeah. calling up certain players. Yeah. Um, do you think that they should be made to be made to play the internationals? Um, I think it's part of career development. Uh, a lot of people are wondering how beneficial it would have been for Raheem Sterling to be there, mm -hmm. um, considering that he would have qualified for it. Um, how beneficial it, it is for someone like Harry Kane to go as well, who's obviously a highly touted player. Also, I think Danny do you think, is, he's, do you think sorry to cut you off there, but yeah. do you think he's, he's exhausted? I mean, um, he's had to do post-season uh, tours as well. He's played for under-21s. He's also played for the England side as well. Yeah. It's fatigue, surely. I mean, that, that probably plays a part, but again, 
just a second ago we were talking about not making excuses for the international side and I think as much as we're saying don't make excuses for the players maybe don't make excuses for the people who are scheduling the people who are taking all these different things into account and maybe not looking into the best for what's for the players we've got to also uh, remember here these players are monitored for their health mm. all the time they're fed exactly what they're supposed to be fed you know they've got everything being, being monitored every time they're trained so if there is something that they worry about then they'd instantly take them out of it and they wouldn't want them to be in danger for that because they realize how important it is we see people who develop very quickly at a young age like Michael Owen burn out very quickly because yeah. their bodies were pushed too far and I think England are really conscious of that now okay well another former player uh, Ray Wilkins said that if Gareth had been able to pick the squad that he actually wanted uh, then they could have gone on to win the tournament now do you agree with that statement it sounds like a lot of FA politics again, mm. um, and maybe people playing things out in the press. A very respectable name in Ray Wilkins there, but you'd certainly say that maybe that was something that you should have voiced internally beforehand. Mm. Maybe you did, we don't know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, sorry, no, sorry. Yeah, it's Jack Wilshire, uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Ryan Sterling, uh, Ross Barkley and Phil Jones were all eligible to play, but... Yep. Nothing. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I listed a couple of those guys and was, mm. was trying to think of all the rest of the eligible names from London, mm. and you think... Within that, um, maybe it's worth bringing through a group of players and not necessarily just what you consider to be the cream of the crop. Gareth was very clear beforehand about having a group mentality mm -hmm. and not just a load of players who happen to be the best but may, maybe don't fit together. We also have to remember all those guys have played quite a few games for the senior side. So there's a development here that maybe we need to take into account that some of these stories in isolation don't. Okay, Lawrence, thank you very much.